Okay, hi everyone. Okay, I didn't think it was so emotional to talk about Java, but I hope it's okay for everybody else. Um, so, I hope it will be okay because I see it's a bit too large, but um, yeah, maybe we can just. Is it just too Ah, I see. Uh, yeah, it should be okay. Like that should be okay. Okay. So, <laughs> hi again, everyone. And um, I'm going to talk today about smart contracts in Java and the uh, work I've been doing uh, lately. So, just to give um, a context of who I am, where I come from. So, I'm on the functional programming and type system lover. I like my types, I like the compiler working for me. Um, really into distributed system, and this is actually what uh, brought me to Ethereum, was working on a distributed uh, open data um, application. I was looking for a way to have distributed metadata management system with a provenance um, verification, and while looking for it, I discovered uh, Ethereum about a uh, year and so ago. And that made me a blockchain addict because it was so great to suddenly you can do all this security and proof and uh, <coughs> just amazing. And what I want is a strong Java community on Ethereum. I think that us, the Java people, are, are a bit alone in, in, in all the Ethereum stuff and it would be nice to come along and do uh, awesome application together. So what is this library and why it exists? So as I said, I, um, when I started to try to do stuff with Ethereum, I, I looked at Ethereum J for any Java guys who tried it. It's great, but it's not so easy to use. It was really hard to set up. It's really hard to connect to a network, really hard to have a, a key pair on it. It was really frustrating. And so I started to build on that, trying to build stuff with it. And it became slowly my personal learning tool. I learned a lot with Ethereum, uh, with this library on Ethereum, how it works, the internals, how you create your transaction, and so on and so forth. And so it became more and more important for me to have to help other people trying to experiment with Ethereum and doing uh, uh, dApps on it. So what is this uh, ETH contract API? So it's more of an integration library. It's a way to have in your Java some smart contracts as a service. Same way you have Rust services, or I don't know which services that you know are in the Java world, then you can have smart contracts as well. Uh, with an emphasis on the type safety, so that the compiler helps you and works for you. And the easy integration, so that you shouldn't have to think about Okay, what are the kind of types that you have in Solidity and how do they translate in Java? It should be automatic. So, I've been working on it uh, for quite some time and today what you can already do is that your smart contract is uh, represented by an interface, a Java interface, that, has, that will be validated against the ABI so that the parameters input and output uh, are correct and work with it. <coughs> Uh, all the communication is abstracted away, so it means that you don't need to think about how to, to set up your node or how to connect to an RPC, all these things. You will have a, a provider to, to connect to it, and then you simply use it. You don't have to think about it. <clears throat> because I, I, I was working with the existing networks, there is a, a predefined providers for the EtherCam testnet, the modern testnet, and the mainnet. It's fully non-blocking, so you don't have to do all the synchronization, whether your transaction has been mined or anything. You get a future back, and then when it's done, it's done. And as much as possible, implicit data uh, conversion. So let's see some codes of how does it work and how you do something on it. So basically, you create your environment here. So it's this uh, Ethereum facet. Um, and then you get your key. Um, of course, because I don't know if you guys have done something on Ethercam, uh, but they are, all, they, they are using always this brain uh, wallet, so you don't really have a key store. But you can use the same concept to take your key store from this. So you, will, you would have to give the, the key store ID here and give the password afterwards. And then you start your Ethereum net, uh, <coughs> node 
or environment. <coughs> you read your solidity code you want to work against. In this case, I publish the contract, but you don't have to. You can also simply um, use the, uh, the existing address. And then you create the proxy object, and then you use it. Here, for example, I've created a function called register. This is a, 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 another project I'm working on to have a distributed uh, app store. So here you would publish your, your new app and a way to get it with a checksum to make sure that when people download it, they download the, the right stuff. And here you will have the, the interface. So I would, I'm not going to ch show the exact interface, but I will show another one and explain a bit the, the, the convention of how an interface has to be written. So basically the rule is like that. If you give back a com completable future, it means that it won't be a constant call, but a one that will create a transaction, and you define what kind of value you want to get in return. If it's a void, it's a fire and forget. It means that you want to create a transaction, but you don't really care when it's going to happen. And otherwise, you have all the constant calls. And here, as I said, there, was, there is this um, uh, increasing conversion. So string is string. You can also have so the arrays will get you list. And if you have your own return type, it will take all the parameters that you get back, find the constructor, and if there is one matching, we create the, the object. So this way, you know, all these things that can be sometimes frustrating that you cannot return struct and that you have to uh, make them back again, here it's done automatically. And so where do I want to go with this library? My, like, the biggest dream would be that it's compatible with Android. You know, I think that doing a, a mobile apps uh, could be really, really cool. Um, better error handling, because I've been doing that for not so long, so some errors are still silent, it's not that good. Sometimes also tricky to find them. The usual suspect, better documentation so that people can jump on it even faster. Easier setup and configuration, especially with the, the configuration of Ethereum J, it's not so, it can be a bit tricky, so I'd like to help people do that. And whatever you need. I mean, I start already talking with a lot of developers. People have great ideas, different needs also. Sometimes you do an application that will be mobile. Some people will do data analysis. Some people would do some any other business needs that they, they would have in their company, big or small. And so the vision of the, 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 this library is that it has to be focused on ease of use. It should be easy for anyone, even if he doesn't have a PhD in Ethereum, meaning if he is not really versed in it, he doesn't understand all the mining process and everything should be still uh, able to use it. And always open to ideas. Always interesting to see how people use the system in different ways, different needs, different ideas. And so my dream is that a lot of projects are coding in the GVM, and we should help them use the Ethereum to do that. And a lot of companies are using Java, and we, sh we should help them do that as well, use Ethereum. And I know that a lot of developers love the GVM, and they also love Ethereum. They, we need to help them join the club and have fun with, the, with all of us. And for that, I will try to create a Java community. I would like to have more and more Java developers come, do dApps, do things in the Ethereum community and Ethereum ecosystem, and yeah, do things together. And for that, I know it's always, if you try to do something at work, they always look at the licensing. So the licensing should be as friendly as possible for people to do stuff with it. And my dream is to see many companies, big and small, to adapt Ethereum because, because of all the work we will do together. And for that, we, we need you, we need the, the developers to do stuff on it. <coughs> we need feedback for people who try the, the library to try it, to tell me what is good, what is bad, what should be changed, what is missing, so on and so forth. Actually creating dApps, 
I think that the, the best way to understand how everything works is to actually do something. So uh, the, the, the thing is done in Java, but actually I'm a Scala lover, so I can guarantee you it works with Scala as well. Um, and be active, talk about it, show it to everyone. I think it's something that the livelier we're going to get, more productive and we're going to be together. Um, as a note, there will be a, a next event at uh, the end of uh, November, 26th and 27th, the DAPAC uh, in Berlin. So it will be a two-day-long uh, event where people can both find out about new technologies and, and also try and write some apps. I will be there. There will be also other, other uh, projects there that will show what they're doing and show how you can play with them. Uh, Xenia is here. You can ask her everything uh, if you want to know anything else on that. And to finish, all the usual suspects, how to contact me if you want to follow, write, send issues, or try something, please feel free. I try to be friendly. I hope I will be. And um, so thank you very much. Uh, Are there any questions? Uh, how tightly are you going to Ethereum J? Uh, like you said, you use RPC in between, like, because there is no like, light client for Ethereum J. Yeah, so right now it's working mainly on Ethereum J, and I started our branch to work with uh, Web, Web3J, which is an RPC uh, implementation in Java. And the idea is that for anyone using the library, it shouldn't make any difference. So they can still use this interface to talk with the smart contracts, just it just so happened that it goes through the RPC and not through the node. So of course there will be some limitation because today there are some stuff that are not coming back from the RPC. For example, the return value is not uh, available if it's uh, through a transaction with the RPC, but otherwise it would be totally transparent. Do you use it in production or...? No. Right now there's not in production, but hopefully there will be a lot of uh, project in production. And have you tried it with Scala? So no, it, it, it is written in Java. The reason is that so that as many people as possible can use it. But yeah, I'm a Scala lover. If I could have written that in Scala, I would have. Okay. So, uh, yes. The, the contract interfaces. Um, you need to provide them, or is um, the system capable of, of generating them? So you have to provide them. The, the the main reason it is done like that. For example, Web three J they have generators to do that. The reason I prefer that you define them is that you can define what kind of value you're expecting, and then the conversion will take place. That when it's generating, you you cannot. So are you basically implementing on Ethereum what Lisp is doing on their own blockchain, or how does it differentiate? No, not really, because here Solidity is still here. I mean, on the Ethereum part, I haven't changed anything. Here it's the integration part that is different. Let's say that it's more an alternative to Web3.js, kind of. Today, usually people will integrate with that. And here it's another way in Java that I think is also nice because you have all the Java, like the, you are in your environment with a type system that you don't have with Web3.js. Uh, on the slide with codes, there was a review of the What, what, what? Uh, on the slide with uh, the codes. Uh, yes. Uh, there's a register method where you can't have the user and there's a URL at the terminal. Uh, so here it's just an example, is that because I'm working on a, the, this uh, decentralized app store and the idea is that you have your organization and you can publish, publish there a way to get it. So here would be like the, sorry, the HTTP, like the URL to download the application. The idea is that you can 
you can put HTTP and then you can put IPFS, you can put BitTorrent, whatever you want, but it's always the same checksum to make sure that we are talking always about the same, uh, the same binary. Yes? Just, just again, I, I did get it. And um, the, the node which is connected is, is an LPC node. So the, so the question is uh, about the nodes. It, the, the back end is, uh, the, the idea is that it, the back end is abstracted away. So the back end can be RPC if you choose it to be. But to, for example, today it's an actual node you, uh, using Ethereum J. So you have an actual node that is syncing locally. But you can choose which one you want, depending on your needs. 